In a previous video, we discussed four clone trooper elements based on the classical elements of air, water, earth, and fire, namely the scuba, jetpack, desert, and flame troopers. Many of you pointed out the distinct lack of snow in that list. Today, we're discussing the missing fifth element to our Ninjago lineup and the epic evolution of snow troopers and their armor, weaponry, transport, and tactics. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Snow troopers was used as a catch all term for the Republic and Empire troops that specialized in frozen environments. The term Snow Trooper is actually a nickname for Imperial Cold Assault Troopers whose armor was largely based on that of the Republic's own Cold Assault Troopers and the Galactic Marines. Snow Troopers had dedicated heat and life support systems built into their backpacks and specialized helmets with smaller visor openings and polarized lenses to prevent snow blindness caused by UV radiation reflecting off the white landscape. Their armor had fewer plates to allow for greater mobility. Snow troopers wore snow boots, gloves, and kamas or capes for extra layers of protection. This also allowed the wearer to create a perfect seal between their helmets and armor, preserving further heat. Many planets in the galaxy were completely covered in snow and ice. Even if the whole surface wasn't frozen, many planets had arctic regions, and snow troopers would be deployed to outposts in these locations. These frozen environments were some of the most unforgiving a soldier could find themselves in. Most frozen worlds were technically deserts, featuring little to no natural cover, almost no natural resources, and extreme temperatures. Wild and merciless blizzards and snowstorms prevented even the most advanced armies from landing their troops close to their objectives. This meant that the snow troopers were often deployed far from their targets and had to travel on foot or by means of specialized transports such as speeders or walkers. Winterized speeders such as the CK-6 or 74Z were used for aggressive scouting, while ATTEs and AT-80s were used as mobile troop carriers. When vehicles were in short supply, snow troopers could also ride at native creatures such as the mast mots of Tula or the Tontons of Hoth. Even with mechanized infantry though, marching through the snow was still a pain in the ass, and their slow pace made troops vulnerable to enemy ambushes and avalanches. Coupled with low visibility, only the most elite and well-trained troops could succeed against an entrenched enemy on a frozen planet. Clone Cold Assault Troopers were clones who had received special winter training from the Kaminoans, although no legions were specially designated for this purpose. Experienced regular troopers could also adapt to Cold Assault roles, as evident when the 501st and the 104th donned Clone Cold Assault gear on Auto Plutonia and Korm, respectively. Clone Cold Assault armor was specially designed with additional thermal seals and more insulated flaps than standard clone bodysuits. The helmet was more flexible and provided greater neck protection with added armored flaps. The visor was thinner and specifically treated to reduce sun glare and prevent frosting when exposed to moisture. Clone Cold Assault Trooper armor also benefited from enhanced temperature regulating functions and a backpack unit which helped with heating. Visually, this armor design shared a lot with the Clone Flame Trooper, but it came in white and was designed to keep the heat inside instead of out. In canon, this armor has been identified as HT-77 Cold Assault armor and cost around 4,000 credits. One of the earliest operations this armor was used in was when Jedi Master Plo Koon and Commander Wolf led the 104th donned in Cold Assault armor to retake the planet Korm. We covered this operation, the Battle of Kormai, more extensively in a previous video. One Cold Assault trooper was Commander Mag, who was assigned to Glid Station, a Republic outpost on Auto Plutonia. There, he tested Sub-Zero equipment until the station was attacked by the native Tulls, who wiped everyone out. After Mag's death, Captain Rex and the 501st were sent to Auto Plutonia, along with the Pentorans, to investigate the incident. In a brief war against the Tulls, the clones used CK-6 swoop bikes, which were also known as Freco speeders, which were larger than bark speeders and featured bubble cockpits to protect the rider. Commander Mag had actually been testing several Freco speeders before his death. The Freco speeders performed poorly in these tests since they ironically kept freezing up. Captain Rex used these speeders as best as he could, but they ultimately couldn't protect the clones from the Tals' spears. 
The Tals, whilst technologically inferior, were superior in number and were fighting on home territory. They would have massacred the Republic forces had Senator Rio Trucci not negotiated for peace. These skirmishes taught the Republic difficult lessons about winter combat and they continued to improve their armor and tactics as the war went on. Originally, the 21st Nova Corps of the Galactic Marines 4th Sector Army were granted autonomy as a separate branch due to their elite skills and abilities. They made frequent use of Phase 2 Cold Assault gear, which saw several improvements from the original clone Cold Assault armor. Led by Jedi Master Kiari Mundi and Commander Bakara, the Galactic Marines used upgraded synth mesh armor on their helmets. Synth mesh was like a combination of plastic and steel, flexible yet resilient. It also kept out contaminants such as sand, snow and ash while protecting from light blaster fire. The Galactic Marines also made heavy use of the UT-80 or Unstable Terrain Artillery Transport which used repulsor skis instead of legs to move. They were designed by Kuat Drive Yards and Mikun Corporation after Republic walkers collapsed the bridge they were crossing on Agama. We see UT-80s for a few seconds in Revenge of the Sith before a Separatist missile blows them up. One notable battle the Galactic Marines participated in was the Battle of Tula, where they were led by Commander Keller. Here, they used giant ungulat mastmots, which resembled a mix of a rhino and a mastodon as transport and war animals. While the Republic was ultimately victorious, chaos ensued in the aftermath when Commander Keller received Order 66 and fired upon his Jedi generals. The clones were able to kill Master Sims, who sacrificed himself to allow Master Hudora and Padawan Noirana to escape. Keller was ruthless, placing the entire Ithaqua station under martial law and conducting raids looking for the Jedi, albeit to no avail. Cold Assault Troopers, known more commonly as Imperial Stormtroopers, benefited from lessons learned in the Clone Wars. They were more specialized and had heavier equipment at their disposal than the clones had. Snowtrooper armor featured all the GAR's innovations, such as polarized lenses, additional heating units, and extra winter supplies. They were also the only stormtroopers who had rank insignias displayed on their armor. The most memorable deployment was in the Battle of Hoth, fought against the Alliance to restore the Republic. At the start of the battle, Imperial forces dropped in too close to the planet, allowing the rebels to raise the planetary shield. This forced the Empire to deploy ground forces led by General Veers instead of bombarding Echo Base from orbit. Blizzard Force, an elite unit within the 501st, was deployed with a strength of at least 9 AT-ATs. The operation did not start as planned, with 3 AT-ATs falling prey to ice crevices in the Karain Valley. Despite the valiant efforts of Rogue Squadron Blizzard 1, the lead walker was successful in taking down the shield generator and snowtroopers began breaching Echo Base. There was also a winterized prototype variant of the ATST called Blizzard Scout, which was weather sealed, thinner, and more maneuverable. On Hoth, an ATST attacked the Echo Base's south entrance with a squad of snowtroopers who attempted to disable the base's ion cannon, facing strong rebel resistance. While they were initially successful, Corporal Jobin from Echo Station 57 took a squad of rebel commandos and temporarily retook the area, firing the ion cannon one last time before the snowtroopers massacred them. So that's our look at the epic evolution of snowtroopers. But what do you think? Which type of snowtrooper do you like best? As always, free to post your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.